Hello and welcome. My name is Petra. I'm in Cambridge today with my daughter Natasha. Yep. <laughs> Hi, together we're Knit Inc. and we are bringing you episode 37. Woohoo! It is Wednesday, March 22nd, and it is about three weeks since our last recording, which is pretty good for us. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, that means that I don't have a ton of knitting, but you do actually. I was, yeah, I have a lot of, I have quite a few small things. Um, I've made progress on stuff. Um, That's nice. And you're up visiting again. Mm -hmm. um, my husband John is traveling for work for two nights, three days. <laughs> so you've come up to help me with little Mateo, who is having a nap. He's been down for 40 minutes, and this nap can be anywhere from 40 minutes to two hours. Oh, wow. So we'll see what happens. We may actually be able to film the whole episode. Yeah. If not, when he wakes, um, he can make a make an appearance, and then he can have some playtime while we finish up. But anyway, um, this is a YouTube channel about mostly knitting and other fiber crafts that we dabble in. Um, and... Let's see, um, you're the mom-grandma, I'm the mom-daughter. Yep. So, um, <laughs> thank you for um, watching and thank you for your lovely comments from our last episode, especially the comments commiserating with me for um, my forced early retirement. I, I feel so much better now. I think I'm in week six-ish. Hmm. My last day at work was February 10th, and um, uh, I, I, since then I've had two trips, and I'm sort of at the point where I'm wondering, did I, how did I ever have time to work? <laughs> I, I don't think it's completely hit me yet, because um, I've done a lot of traveling, and I've been lucky enough to come up here and visit Mateo and his parents, um, so that's been really great. Uh, I thought I'd have all this extra knitting time, but actually that hasn't happened yet. So thank you for your comments. Um, we read each and every one of them and try to reply to some of them. Yeah, and um, just thank you for watching and being here and welcome if you're new. Um, yes. And even though we aren't very active on Instagram, thank you. This is our handle. I think I put this up. Um, we do appreciate the comments over there too. So mm -hmm. it's hard. I always like take photos and want to post them and then... For some reason, the act of posting them can sometimes be hard. I like forget, and then I feel like the time is gone. So mm -hmm. I have a bunch of pictures I could be posting of stuff, but um, we'll it, goes, it goes in phases yeah, as life yeah. happens. Um, we are close to 7,000 subscribers, though, on our YouTube channel. Oh, maybe should there be rumblings of a giveaway? Maybe. <laughs> so if you aren't subscribed yet, please do hit that subscribe yeah. button. I think it's... it would be good to do a 7,000 subscriber giveaway. It's okay. not like a... It's not like a, you know... Big milestone. Well, I think well, every every subscriber feels like a good milestone. That's but true. But I mean, like, it's not like an even number that people might, you know, 5,000, like 10,000, or even 7,500. But it's been a while since we've done one. And um, so maybe in our next episode, we'll see how close we are. And we can have have a thought on what the giveaway should be. But yeah. stay tuned next episode. We're not We're not planned for it. We haven't planned for it yet, so um, next time. It's just kind of hit us, yeah. yeah. And I'm... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just reached a little snafu in my knitting because I'm doing helical knitting. Oh, and you and, I did, and I'm doing a rib. Oh. And the first row of rib is... Um, cause of, I'm segue right into helical knitting now. <laughs> So I'm working on the lento. So this is a little out of ordinary, but I'm just going to I'm just going to jump like I'm just like, going to go for it. I'm just going to go for it. This is the lento by Oh, this is the one I couldn't pronounce last time. Yana Hitala. So this is my whip and I um there was a knit along which has long since finished, hosted by Rebecca from the Crea Bea podcast and Amy Palco from the Meaningful Stitch podcast. Um, if you're interested, they both have knitted at least one or two or maybe more lentos. So one of you viewers asked why I'm doing helical knitting when I'm the main, I'm using Hulse 
super soft and I couldn't remember the name of the colorway last time I said it's a flower this is hyacinth oh okay not iris or crocus but hyacinth there's a lot of purple flowers out there huh yeah and I am the mohair I'm holding with it is um, by stranded dye works Jude who's based in Scotland and the colorway is naive watercolor and these were one of these were um, one of a kind uh, colorways I think or maybe I'm not sure because it's it's got a name here naive uh, watercolor maybe but mine was one of a kind I think yours was but the thing is that the two skeins were very different one mm -hmm. was much more saturated than the other which is, that's why I decided to do helical knitting. I think you can still tell in this that... Even though this is wound up with the whole super soft. This, this is brighter. Yeah. The blues were brighter, the purples were brighter. This is a little bit more... It's still bright and colorful, but you can, you can see. It's a little muted. Yeah. So the, the reason... purple's kind of the same, but it's the blue and green that really is Yeah, brighter. that's true. The reason I wound this up already is because I had four strands of helical knitting and I was getting really tangled. As it is, I'm getting kind of tangled too. So I'm knitting with this and these two. And helical knitting is really great if you need to alternate skeins because you don't have a line. Like for example, if you were changing under the arm, I've done that in the past and then you just have a line there. So the way that helical knitting works, and there is a YouTube um, video, um, Grace the Babbler is the... She has a really good video. That's the one that I referenced before I got the hang of doing it on Me my own. too. She's the first one that I really remember talking about. So the helical knitting is that when you get to your new yarn, you just, you slip three stitches before the yarn, you slip three stitches. I'm actually just at the point, so... Um, so those three stitches are constantly shifting over, so you're not slipping the same three stitches every time. But this isn't going to be a tutorial about that, so... But, no, please go watch the anyway, tutorial, but I'll just explain now the challenge... With or, rib? With rib. So the helical knitting is... I'm, I've been knitting with this yarn, and I'm three stitches away from the new yarn, and you normally would just slip these... You just drop this, slip three stitches, and start knitting with the new yarn. But I am just started doing one by one rib, because I'm at the rib. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to slip the stitches, because that'll break the rib. So I've done this before, and what I still, I still slipped them. Okay. But what I did is I made sure that when I started knitting again, if I needed to knit or purl, right? So... This is going to be, this. you ended on a knit, so this is purl, knit, purl. Yeah. So now this is knit. So you just you just leave these and you will... And you'll, knit the, you'll knit or purl them next time. Really? That's oh, what wow. I did. Okay. Purl, knit, purl. Okay, I'll right, try it. Right, and then that's going to be knit. And then since it shifts every time, you're going to you're gonna work those three stitches in your rib next time. But they're, aren't they going to be out of sync? Oh, I probably won't notice. It's just going to be those, I mean, it's just going to really, it's just going to be two stitches that weren't purled, and you're not going to notice. Oh, Because okay. it's just that one. I was going to, okay, I was going to uh, change them to a purl. I guess you could have done that too. That was probably, that's probably. But uh, that's okay. I'll do it when I get to it. I'll, I'll see how, on the next round. Yeah, but basically as long as you just make sure the, basically the, it's either going to be that knit, you purl, knit, and then the next one's purl. Or, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So. I do. Okay. So, so this is my whip. And last time I had split for the sleeves, I think. So um, now I'm at the rib. So this is the body. It's at a really loose gauge. I'm using um, 6 millimeter US 10 needles. Well, actually, I just switched to 4 millimeter needles US 6 for the rib. Um, and I'm excited. I think this is going to be a great spring sweater. I hope I made it big enough. I, now I'm into wearing sweaters with positive ease yeah instead of zero ease definitely not negative ease um so yeah i i think now i'm on the rib and then i'm gonna knit the sleeves and um i must have been working on a sleeve maybe in the last episode or the episode before because one of you viewers asked me what needles i was using when i'm knitting sleeves 
So what I've transitioned to is using these little short needles instead of doing magic loop for sleeves. I do find that it's actually much more efficient. And it's these. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's the twist short combo. Um, but I only have two. They're quite expensive. I, I bought two sets, US 6 and US 8. So this would need 10 and I don't have 10s. I should have just bought the set mm -hmm. because one... Do you have... Oh, my shorties aren't short enough for that. But then I bought this... I splurged on this liquor shorty sets. Mm -hmm. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to knit the sleeves using these. And you can use the cord from that or the... I mean, these are close. These are close, yeah. yeah. So I do now like to knit sleeves on short circumference needles and short tips versus magic loop. I used to do magic loop all the time. I usually do um, the short needles as well for sleeves. sleeves. Yeah. Okay, so that was kind of out of sync whips. But let's, talk, let's go back to the beginning. What are we wearing? Natasha, what are you wearing today? I have an FO that I'm wearing. <laughs> um, okay, I have a sign for this. I believe. Yes, okay. This is the Good Grandpa Cardigan by K. Dree. So um, I wanted to actually shout out to Carol because this you gave me this yarn in a swap and I believe that was, um, I think it was 2020, mm -hmm. around Christmas time 2020. Okay. That I was, um, we did a holiday swap with your... My local, my local knit group. We local do that every year. Yeah. We do a yarn swap in, in December, which is so much fun. So last time, I think I just had the pockets, maybe maybe some of a sleeve left, and I talked about the whole saga of I was going to run out of this green yarn, and I, ordered, I bought some from a nice Ravelry user, um, and then I was like, oh, I'm definitely going to need the blue yarn for the pockets and seaming. Well, no, I had enough yarn. I have this much left over, which I didn't weigh, but it's probably like a quarter of a ball. Mm -hmm. Um, and I did the pockets. Nice, Natasha. I, I didn't do the most perfect seaming. They're done after and like, I didn't tuck anything under. I just did kind of like a mattress stitch. I did pin them in place before mm -hmm. sewing them down. Afterthought pockets. I like them. They weren't, I don't know if they were afterthought because they, there was no, like. No, what I mean is like afterthought heel where, whereas pockets that are integral to the sweater. Right. But like, I didn't cut anything to add oh, it. Oh yeah. Good point. Okay. And I feel like with the afterthought heel you cut, right? That's true. So this was just, it could have been, comp they were just like sewn on top. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I can I can put my, oh, we're using my phone to record. But do you have your phone handy? I do. Let me show you how this works. Ta-da! Oh. <laughs> so it's, it's structural. It, I was worried that the phone was going to like cause it to like really pull, but uh -huh. it's actually um, holds it, holds its structural integrity quite well. Very nice. And then these are buttons that my grandfather, your dad, made. Um, they're really special. They These are made from, ce was it cedar? Oh, cedar, yeah. From our, our, garden. our garden. And I'm. Mm -hmm. this is my first time wearing this. It's kind of falling off my shoulders and stuff. I just have a tank top on underneath. But maybe I could, It's. I wanted it kind of loose, but it is, um, maybe I can throw it in the dryer for a little bit because it's just a tiny bit. Yeah. Slippy. But um, I like it's that so it's kind cool. of like um, oversized. Oversized. And um, I did say it was a little scratchy, but, I, but I've been wearing it for like half an hour now and it's not bothering me. Oh, good. So um, I think it's just the initial yeah. put on of it. But um, and yeah. You have blocked it. Very nice. I, have, I haven't blocked it since I put the pockets on. I blocked oh, it after that. Okay. Um, but I don't really think I need to worry about that. I might just. I don't know. I'll I'll wear it, put a different shirt on underneath, and maybe it won't slide as much because it's just mm -hmm. on my skin sliding. But mm -hmm. yeah, I'm happy with this. Um, it's a nice fit. It'll get its first rodeo of nursing after we finish recording. So yeah, that's that's 
what I'm wearing and an FO. Nice. So what I'm wearing is an old FO. It's the Cycleteur by Acetricosa. And Cycleteur means bicyclist. Um, this is an old FO. Not that old. No. In the grand scheme of your knitting. That's true. So there's a, another episode where I talk about it in a lot more detail. And I feel like it's about a year ago. I think it was my birthday sweater last in 2022. Okay. And this yarn I got, it's Swedish, um, gosh, I'm blanking on the sheep. I'm going to have to look it up. It's Swedish yarn that I got from Asa Tricosa, who's mm-hmm. got, not Asa Tricosa, sorry, Kia, who's got a podcast called Kia's Bar that has been my longtime favorite podcast. Okay, it's 100% Gotland wool. Okay. Which has uh, got some pretty unique properties. It's got this beautiful halo. It's very light. It's one of these woolly wools that's light and so warm. Mm. I, I really love it. And I love this um, design. Asa Tricosa is one of my favorite designers, but this neck is kind of fun and you can wear it in different ways. There's just, it, this is a saddle shoulder s- s- sweater. But Asa Tricosa is pretty famous for her set-in sleeve, sleeves, mm-hmm. the ziggurat technique, which other people are using too now. But I think she was the, well, one of the first ones. Um, so yeah, it, this is one of my favorite sweaters. It did pill a little bit, and I've depilled it, but it's it's light and warm. Nice. Yeah. I actually, I think I'd like to get this black. I'm not sure if Kia has any of this wool available on her website now. You can go to kiasbod.se to check, but there is a black, what? brown, S- natural. S- S-E, S-E, sorry, for Sweden. Okay, yeah. I was like, S-E. <laughs> That's how you say it in Swedish. Yeah, yeah That's yeah. why I... <laughs> I know, but in case, in case you're... I try, I'm... Retired brain. Anyway, <laughs> um, what I'm trying to say is that there's a natural black brown in this that I would love to make a sweater out of too. Oh, okay. Nice. Yes. Okay, so that's what we're wearing. And apologies that it stopped now, but if you hear some drilling, it sounds like there's some construction happening a few streets away. So okay, there it goes. There it goes. So hopefully that's not too loud. Okay. So let's talk about finished objects. Okay, um, I'll talk about this little gnome I made. Oh yes, Natasha. So veering off into another craft of yeah, felting. This, this was some needle felting. Oh, and we did make some felted balls. I didn't grab them, but we did make some. If we have a break, we'll bring them. Yeah, so this is um, goinggnome.com is the um, company that makes this. And this is their um, limited edition 2023 gnome of the year. So here is... This is fun. I love the toadstools. Yes, so it has... There are three little toadstools in his backpack. And he does stand up on his own, which I was nervous he wasn't going to. Let's see, there he is. <laughs> so this is my first time oh. really doing like a... Um, needle felting? I've done something where it was kind of like on an embroidery hoop. Mm-hmm. Um, and you just do it like flat into fabric. This was my first like 3D needle felting thing. Um, it was fun. I mean, the instructions were, you know, walked you through it. Um, it's... John was, like, so confused by what I was doing because I'm just, like, stabbing, like, a ball of fluff. And he was very skeptical because Mm. at first it doesn't look like a gnome, you know. Mm. It looks kind of funny, um, especially before the face and and all of that. But um, it was fun. I don't know. I'm going to put the – now that we've talked about this, I'm going to put it away for Christmas time. I'm going to take – I have some extra – sorry, this might crinkle. I have some extra – um in here Um, so they actually give you they give you three different um colors for the face which is nice so these were the three colors so you could do um a light dark or medium skin tone for the gnome and i went for the medium and i just had this nubbin left but i have these um these left over so we can put these towards the felted balls um, and I just have a few odds and ends that I just didn't end up 
end up using. I could have, but like I felt like it was enough with what I had, so I figured we can add them to the felted balls. So you, they give you the crinkly um, wool for the beard. Or yeah, it's already crinkled. It's already okay. like this is the extra I had. Nice. Um, How long did it take you? Do you know roughly? I'd say this? probably about a week, um, and maybe. I could do it in like half an hour spurts each time, mm -hmm. really in the evening. Um, and were the instructions good? Yeah, they were decent. You had, yeah, they were pretty good. Okay. Um, yeah. Very nice. So that's my gnome. So that little guy is going to go into the Christmas, Christmas box. Do, okay. you, do you feel like you'd want to do more felted? Needle felting figures. Yeah, I think it would be kind of fun. Um, I would do. I would do some other. Mm. Oh. Okay. I would. Yeah, I would do some. Um, mm -hmm. Another one, for sure. Nice. Do you have any other another FO you want to talk about? So I only have one FO, and it's 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 not a very exciting FO, and it was an almost FO last time. Oh, or, or let me guess. Are they those scrambled egg socks or those? <laughs> scrambled eggs. Not scrambled eggs. Free range eggs. Free range eggs. No, scrambled eggs would be pretty good. Yes, free range eggs. I bet there are scrambled egg colorways. <laughs> Probably. And last time I talked about them, I said it was Malabrigo, but it's not Malabrigo. It's Madeline Tosh. Oh, it's, it's for some reason those are easily confused. Yeah, so it's yarn I had in deep stash. Nice. And I'm really glad that I used it up. And the black is Happy Feet that I'm using now actually for my next pair of socks so these are going to go to my friend and it's her birthday end of march okay so they haven't been blocked yet i'm going to block them put on a label and give them to her for her birthday nice. so that's these are these are my fo that's it cool i have one other fo oh i'm just playing vanilla socks sorry no all good toe up is my favorite way of knitting socks so, oh shoot, where's my book? Oh, it's under there. Okay, so I was gift, we were gifted this book um, that we talked about last time, and I made uh, Theo the Triceratops from this book. Um, so, the, let me see, let me get a picture of him. There he is. And I had, and you can see these are the different pieces. So this book, it's all about you knit a square and then kind of cinch, cinch different pieces in and mm -hmm. also um, uh, a few, you know, you need a few other smaller pieces to seam on, but it's a little less fiddly than some other um, ways of doing stuffies. Yeah. So I'm mostly pleased with this. So I, I, this is from, I had some Noro that was gifted to me. Um, this was a 50 gram skein of Noro and it used every last drop. Oh, wow. Which was That's nice. Great. Um, it was the the Silk Garden. Um, oh, okay. So this, it was this one, and um, I, the tag said to use size US 7 to 8 needles, and I used, let me see, I used, I used size 7. Okay. So I did something funky with the way I cinched in the hind legs and they look kind of too tight compared to the front legs um, mm. and the bind off for the frill might have been a little tight but here he is he's a funny looking creature it, mine doesn't look quite the same as the picture it looks kind of like a rat but um i'm actually i'm making a second one and i'm actually going to give this to my friends i think he's about 15 months uh-huh maybe 16 months, um, not quite a year and a half yet. And um, I think he, I think he'll like it. I think it's kind of cute. If um, And I'm making another one that I'll give either to Mateo or um, a nine-month-old boy. Um, so, But so yeah. this is really clever. So it really is made from one, from one rectangle. So I've already made which... all the parts for the second. And so... The same person that gifted me the that 50 gram, gram um, skein of Noro also gifted me this 200 gram skein. Oh, okay. And this is also Noro, but this is um, 
a bigger ball, obviously. Oh, mm-hmm. Mateo's up. I'll grab it in a second. So I have made all the pieces for a second one. So I'll, this I'll is go get him. You can continue talking okay. about how you make these things. Oh, it's clever. So this yes. is the this is the piece that then has the tail. Um, sorry, we shook there for a second. So you end up um, pulling in pieces. You end up using some string to pull in, cinch in for the legs, um, and then you seam up. The seaming, honestly, was kind of annoying, but I did it in phases, so it wasn't too bad. Um, This is the frill for my second one. And then you do um, two horns and a nose. And I think these are my two horns. And I did block this before I seamed it. So I'm going to do the same for this one. Um, I can't find the other piece, but I will block all these. I just wanted to show you all. Um, I will block them and then seam this up and then decide if I want to do a third one. Basically, I'm realizing I could make, with 200 grams, I can make four out of this. But I also want to make the fish that's in here, so I think I might cast on the fish after this one gets seamed. The fish looks a little bit easier, but basically I was trying to figure out what would be nice with the Noro. Um, So this is yin and yang, the fighting fish, which you can see it's one big square and then three other pieces. Hi! Look who's woken up from his nap. Hi there! Did you have a good nap? He woke up all smiley. Yeah, he's what usually think of, What do you think of this thing, Mateo, huh? What do you think of it? What do you think of it? <laughs> so that's my, those are my little stuffies that I've been working on. It looks like you're having fun with them. Yeah. And it's a smallish thing oh. that you can finish, right? Yeah, um, and for the most part, it's easy to put up and pick up and put down. Yeah, which um, is important. There's like some fun this is just done with knits and pearls, no cable mm-hmm. or twisting um, for the ridges. And I like the way, I think the fun thing with the Nora with these stuffies are the different colors, you know? Oh, yeah. So um, it makes them interesting, yes. Yeah, what do you think of this? What do you think of Theo the Triceratops? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I just woke up. Yeah. And I might be, is he going to be hungry next? What's... Um, He's got a little bit to eat. A little bit, maybe okay. about an hour. Oh, okay. He had a pretty short nap, didn't he? I'm not um, about an hour. Okay, about yeah. an hour. So, okay, I have one more stuffy related. Oh, you do? Okay, let's hear about it. Okay. Let's hear about the stuffy. So that is done. So I am do I am doing the frog by oh, Claire yeah, Garland. The frog. And I think I said last time that quite a few people had been making mm-hmm. these frogs. It's very popular. And the sweaters, oh my gosh. So here is the frog. He, he came out really well. I sure. did block him. So I pinned his feet flat and his his legs um, or his front arms in an angle. And the way you knit them, it does help make that shape. And then I did sew his hind legs to be... As if he's about to jump. Yeah. So I'm going to mail this to Georgie. Mm-hmm. I'm going to package it up. Um, I think it'll be yes. fun for her to get this little guy in the mail. Probably want to put it in a little box. Yeah. So you didn't use, did you use wire? No. No. no wire. You said, you mentioned that I was going to need wire, but the pattern didn't call oh, for it. Okay. I didn't use wire. No, no wire. I don't know where that came from then. Um, okay. Did you, and that must have been fiddly. Are these stuff? This? No. No. It's an I cord. I, yeah, I cord. Okay. This I did not enjoy as much. This, this was a, this I had to like force myself to sit down and finish and it's tiny. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, but the knitting the pieces for the tri- Triceratops were more enjoyable. The seaming, not so much, but again, I yeah. do it in stages. <laughs> um, you know, I'll seam one section and then work on something else. And also the seaming, it's so small that I can do a seaming thing in like 10 minutes and sometimes that's oh, all I have. So yeah. it is it works out. It's fine. So I don't know if I'll make another one of these. I have some more of the scrappy pieces. This was leftover yarn from your advent from Rebecca mm-hmm. of Crea Bea podcast. Um, so, so it's, it's a nice British woolly wool. Yeah. And I held two strands of things together. You can see I ran out of the green and used a blue for the front legs. Um, yeah. I don't know if I'll make another one of these. 
But the marling is nice. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. It'll be great to send it to Georgie. She she yeah. requested that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so those are my FOs. I have two whips. One I will talk more about than the other. Okay. What do you have left to talk about? I have two whips. Oh. I have what you made me for my birthday. Oh. Which yes. actually I'll talk about that now because that's an FO. I yeah. didn't bring it last time. Which is kind of another. You've been into using making these kits. Yeah. So this, this is, is when I was on when I was. Um, this is embroidery. Was I either still pregnant when I bought these, or when it was when he was first born? I think. No, I think I was still pregnant, and I bought bought like a bunch of kits. Uh, yeah, because I think you made this well in advance of my birthday, which is February first. Right. So it is really beautiful. Again, a mushroom theme. So this kit um, um, is by Cozy Blue. And I got this kit at um, Gather Here, which is in Cambridge. If you're in the Boston area, it's an awesome craft shop. Um, yeah, but this this company is, looks like it's they're based out of Asheville, North Carolina, and I loved all of the um, kind of branding that came with this oh, kit. Yeah. They had some really cute um, notes. So let's see what it said here. Can I find the? Oh yeah. Slow down, get cozy, get crafty. And there's a whole little note about each of those things um, with this little postcard. So, like, you know, I encourage you to slow down. And mm -hmm. this is all about being comfortable. Um, the world needs more happy people, so let's keep stitch stitching. And just some cute little notes. Here we go. That's really lovely. Start slow, start simple. Just, like, cute little Very notes. Nice. And there's a lot of... I should give this back to you. There's a lot of floss left over. Yeah, I'll put that with my um, my other my other stuff. Yeah. Should I give you something oh, to yeah. play with? So I'm happy just hanging. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna, gonna this? give this back to you, Natasha. Okay. Um. So now on to whips. Yes. Okay. What's this? So I already talked about my lento. My other whip is a new whip so uh, that I started um, I was lucky enough to go on a whirlwind trip to Egypt for 10 days it was just amazing it was my first time to Egypt um, it was a large group of us uh, some of my Egyptian friend organized it and there were five Egyptian people on the actual tour and we each sort of invited one person or two so there were 20 of us in total which was amazing wow but we all got along really well and we had four days of cruise on the Nile which was really spectacular so I needed some simple knitting and this is what I took with me and this is also a kit it's um, by Martina Ben and the, it's a wrap called Polaris so I got this kit in my local yarn exchange my, my local um, knitting group at the same exchange that Natasha talked about except this one was last year 2022 from Eve and it was I think it was a hundred and fifty or maybe it will say here it was this pattern by Martina Ben and the yarn is Sweet Georgia Superwash BFL and Silk Lace but it actually is more I think it's more like a light fingering than a lace probably can't see it the way I'm holding it but this is very similar colors to your lento yeah I mean it's crazy similar <laughs> really I mean look at this yeah this is just kind of a darker version of this maybe I'll wear them together so this is how much I have left and it's 85% wool 15% silk oh it was 115 grams Okay, I knew it was more than a hundred. So the interesting, so it's a wrap, and you could either the suggestion was to use um, US four or US five needles, and you needed two circulars, and I didn't have two US five circulars, so I knit, so I used US four, but I really wish I had used bigger needles or maybe even six. I was reflecting on this morning, so it would be lighter and drapier. Mine's not, mine doesn't look as light and drapey as, as the pattern shows. So the interesting, 
I'm sorry, it's, you can't see it very well because now it's on one big circular needle. But the interesting thing about it is you start in the middle on two circular needles. Mm -hmm. You cast on like um, magic, what is it called? When you, when you cast on for a sock. Is it Julie's magic? Something like that, yeah. So you cast on 250 some stitches on each needle and then you just knit out. So it means that even though this is stocking stitch, you're only knitting. And then once you get to a certain point, you to get to do these eyelet border, you join in the round and you just knit on one circular needle, which is what I'm on now. Cool. So I'm just gonna knit until I have five grams left and then I bind off. So I'm very close and this is all, this is the only thing I knitted on while we were traveling. Mm -hmm. And it was perfect for traveling because at the time I was just basically knit, just knitting back and forth with some some increases for the for the edge here. I took a pair of socks which I'll show in a minute that I didn't even take out of the bag. <laughs> so this was But this you was, need the backup, right? You, you need, need the, the backup. You need the the different types of knitting when you're traveling. Because I was worried that I, you're always worried that you're gonna run out of knitting. Yeah. Um the deep fear. The deep fear, but this was perfect light easy to pick up um so then i only have one more fo and um one one little dream knitting project okay what about oh what do you have sweet so i have um i have two whips but really really just one i'll just quickly touch i have i'm in the middle of a row i have made progress on my blanket do you, here, you can take him. He's trying to grab the mushroom. Oh, nice. It's past the baby. Past the baby. Little um, to him. Yeah. This is my no pearl rib rib blanket by Pearl Soho. I'm not going to go too into depth on it because I have only knit about an inch oh, okay. since the last time. So I'll make more progress. And um, Will you be working on the stuffies? Yeah. I dropped stitches. Uh -oh. I think um, Mateo wants to have something to chew on. I don't think this is the thing. Um, no. Yeah, that might not be nice to chew on, but you can hold it. So that's that. Um, and then, so with the yarn that I... Um, the extra yarn? The four skeins that I b bought from a Ravelry user, I looked up some patterns that took that weight and that amount of yarn and found Lino's coat oh. or Lino's coat and um, let me grab a picture so this is going to be it's sort of like a little jacket and it just comes in one size oh. um, it says for ages it says plus or minus 9 12 months okay um, and it's this cute little garter stitch jacket oh that is cute That's so um, I think I have just enough <laughs> I might be a little the short, but we're just gonna on. we're just gonna go for it. And in thinking it'll be good for him for the fall, mm -hmm. um, you know, he'll be about nine months in September, so it can be his September through maybe this time next year. We'll see. Um, little jacket. So that is what I've been working on. I started, and it's um, it's the pattern is free actually. And it's in French and English, um, and I'm starting a sleeve. So it's just, it's garter stitch, um, and I think it's mostly in one piece, and then some seaming. So you can see this is the start of a sleeve, and um, Teo and I can be sort of matching. Yeah, that'd yeah. be cute. Um, so that's, that's all I have. Okay, that's a lot, Natasha, yeah. with all these stuff. For three weeks. For three weeks. So what's your focus? The, the finishing up the stuffy? Yeah, I'm bouncing, between, I'm bouncing between the triceratops and the jacket. And then if I'm tired but want to knit, I work on the blanket. Oh, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so I have I'll take a pair of socks that I started, but they're different to my usual vanilla <clears throat> socks. They're a pattern that I bought, um, and they're called... Shorty socks? Oh, oh everyday socks. Yeah. Everyday socks knitwear by Rachel. So it is a paid for pattern and I literally just started them 
and they're shorty socks but they've got this extra cuff so this is this is um double you knit and then you um turn it and knit and pick up stitches to make this fold so this this is the heel and i'm just going to start on the foot um and i'm going to do it in this color katya to tokyo sock lovers it's just a commercial self-striping yarn 75 percent superwash wool 25 percent of polyamide um what i like about these socks is they've got this heel for comfort they're shorty and they're reinforced around the ball of the foot and i think the heel which is really great because i'm always wearing out my socks on the ball of the heel in fact i put on a pair of hand knit socks today and realized they have a hole on them in them so i'm always repairing my socks mm. um and so th th this traveled all the way up and down the nile through egypt as is as is without coming out of this bag <laughs> but um i'm looking forward to knitting on these and showing you how they come up i think this pattern came out in 2021 so it's a relatively new pattern and then this is the happy feet the black that i've been using for heels toes and cuffs it's made in peru it's um what is it 90% superwash, 10% nylon, and it's quite a nice soft yarn. I just had it in my stash. So that's my other um, whip. And then the next thing I want to do, start, is to make uh, Elizabeth Zimmerman's baby surprise jacket. I actually bought the physical pattern a long time ago. This is a classic. Thousands and thousands have mm. made these. And... Um, Matteo has one, he's been wearing one that I made nine years ago for a friend's little boy. I think he boy. was wearing it last episode. He was, we yeah. talked about it last episode. And my niece is expecting a baby girl, so I'm going to make one for the baby girl in, in this color, in sock weight yarn. Nice. I'm going to use US4 needles, so I'm excited to cast this on, this is going to be my next cast on, but before I do... I want to finish the little Gansey I've been making for Matteo. Mm. I'm on the sleeves. Yeah. And I want to finish this shawl because those are the needles that I want to use. Oh. <laughs> so, so that's that's it for my knitting. And I haven't. Soon I'll be we'll be starting to think about spring and summer knitting, but mm -hmm. I'm not there yet. I'm gonna finish this lento, and then figure out what will be the next garment that I knit for myself. Nothing is. I don't have anything that I'm itching yeah. to cast on in terms of a garment for me right now, which is unusual. I usually have something. Well, you've got a few nothing things on is, the go. Yeah, I've got a few things on the go. So what about you? I haven't thought about what's next. Just, I guess the fish is really the next thing. But as far as garments for me, I'll probably want to dive into some spring or summer, maybe a spring or summer cardigan. Yeah, oh yeah, that, that might be nice. I don't know if I'll cast on the um, new to din. Oh, that might be a fall, the yeah, knitted and cardigan. Oh, yeah, thank you for your suggestions of options yeah. for knitted and cardigan. So you've got a nice short list when fall comes. Yeah, exactly. And you didn't insert the um, photo of my Kuru socks because I never sent you the photo. Yeah. But I have put it on my Ravelry page now. It's not a great photo. I, I just didn't take photos of those socks. But go and watch um, Bella from 100 Acre Wool if you're interested in making socks out of unspun yarn, either Nutiden or Plotulopi, and there's more and more unspun yarn now um, coming out. Yeah. So it's it's not just Nutiden anymore. Yep. So, so I think that's about it. We didn't put you in any knitwear this time, but no. But thanks for being such a good boy at the end here. He's yeah. So he's just over three months, so he's not sitting up yet, but. His head's getting stronger, mm -hmm. and he's grabbing things, and he's pretty close to rolling over. He's yes. really good at tummy time, and he start and he makes vowel sounds, which is so sweet. Yeah, you can have a conversation with him, just with O's and R's. Now he's just kind of grunting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of effort to try and grab something, you know. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah. Thanks for watching. I hope you're all keeping well, and I hope that you're finding time 
every day at least a little bit of time to do something that brings you joy. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Thanks for watching. Until please, next time. Please subscribe and hit the thumbs up. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.